reading more of any immunity system. So, the first characteristic of any immunity system is the non-specific events. So, when it say it's non-specific, so it detects the broad range of pathogen using a small groups of receptor protein. It also is a rapid response compared to the adaptive immunity. And it's showing the same response to pathogen each time and found in all animals. Let's move to the first part of the innate immunity system, the external barriers. From this diagram, you can see a few examples of parts of the body and the mechanisms that involve in the external barrier system. As an example, you have this lysozyme in tears and other secretion. The skin surface that acts as a physical barrier that also contain a fatty acid and normal flora. The stomach that able to change the pH rapidly. The normal flora that present in the intestine. The flushing of urinary tract. The mucus lining of the trachea and the cilia that function to removing particles in the nasopharynx. So, barrier defense are include your skin, your mucous membranes, and the secretion from the skin and mucous membrane. Skin. Skin provides an extensive surface area of interface that interact with the outside environment. Skin not only harbor millions of common cell microbiota, but it also a home to normal flora, which is the non-pathogenic bacteria that prevent the growth of the pathogen. As you can see in the diagram, numerous layers such as the epidermis and dermis are responsible to give the physical protection or said as impenetrable barrier to the skin towards the pathogens and also the physical intrusion. Other than skin, mucous membrane is an epithelial cell that line the digestive, the respiratory, the urinary, and our reproductive tract. It has specialized cells that scattered between the epithelial cell to secrete the mucus that are able to trap the pathogen. The pathogen can be eliminated by several mechanisms. The first example is the mucous membrane at the digestive tract. Once the pathogen enters the stomach through food, it may be killed by the stomach acids, the digestive enzyme in the intestine, and the normal flora in the gastrointestinal tract. The stomach itself provides the acidic environment with the pH2 that kills most of the pathogen before it can enter the intestine. The second example is the mucous membrane at the respiratory tract. The epithelial cell that line the respiratory tract also consists of the cilia on its surface. So once the pathogen invades that area, the pathogen, which is in inhaled air, will be trapped by the mucus within the trachea, bronchi, and bronchioles. The cilia then sweeps the mucus upward towards the glottis to be swallowed into the digestive tract. This diagram showing you the cilia structure on the surface of the epithelial cell at the respiratory tract with the goblet cell which produces the mucus. Another example is the mucus membrane that lines the female reproductive tract. So at the vagina, it secretes the sticky and acidic secretion 
and able to kill the pathogen. This secretion also promotes the growth of normal flora that prevent the growth of the pathogen. Have you ever heard about the UTI? UTI is the urinary tract infection. UTI may be caused by several bacteria, but 90% of the UTI incident caused by bacteria for E. coli. So, in both males and females, the urinary tract will be protected with the secretion from up to the cell, which act as the antibacterial agent, which inhibit the bacterial growth. Other than that, the acidic urine also inhibit the bacterial growth, while cleans the lower urinary tract and flush away the pathogen in the tract. The third one is the secretion from the skin and the mucous membrane. The sweat, the mucus, the saliva, and tears is a hostile to many microbes due to the presence of the oil and the sweat gland that give the human pH at 3, which range from 3 to 5, which is acidic, to inhibit the growth of pathogens. It also contains lysozyme that degrades the bacteria cell wall. 